right, so today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be looking at how to create custom Instagram filters. Pretty, pretty easy tutorial, pretty straightforward, but super useful and something you can use to make more money if you want to or just up your Instagram story game. Anyways, let's hop into After Effects and get started with this tutorial. So once we're inside of After Effects, you want to create a 1080 by 1920 canvas at 24 frames per second. You can do however many frames per second you want, but I'm just going to do 24 frames just because it's what I like to do. And um, you want to make sure you keep it pretty short. So I'm just going to start off with a five second composition to begin with because we're going to be exporting as a PNG sequence. So we want to keep it as short as we possibly can and make sure that it loops. And that's the most important thing because you know, we're going to start off by creating a pretty simple text animation with a border around it that's going to go around the whole screen um, and animate the text along the path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a solid and I'm going to make it white and then I'm going to take my masking tool up here and then I'm simply going to draw around that looks about centered and then I'm just going to click subtract. So now we have our border already. So that's the first step. We can just rename this to border. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some text on there. I'm going to say, I'm going to do something motivational because that always bangs on Instagram. So let's do something like, uh, gotta keep it moving. And I'm just going to center it so we can have a look at it. Looks pretty decent, but I'm going to decrease it, uh, increase the cutting a bit or just reset it actually. So now this is what we have to begin with and it looks pretty good, but we want this text to be shown around this border inside of it almost and animate around. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and pick a different color for this. Let's do like an orangey yellowy. And then what we're going to do is take this mask, copy it and paste it onto our text layer. And then we're just going to go ahead and click and drag this and kind of center it. Now, if you open our text properties, you can go into text and path options and then click mask one, which is the mask we have. And then we want to reverse path. I'm just going to change the color of this so we can see what, it do, what we're doing because uh, contrast is horrible. As you can see, it's pretty close to, well, it goes all the way to the edge of this, which it's up to you if you want to increase the border or move the text. So what I want to do, I like the size of our border, so I'm just going to change the path that the border is on. I'm just going to click two points at a time and incrementally increase it a little bit just to be somewhat centered. And this can be pretty finicky, especially if you want to get it pretty good. So sometimes it can be worth it just to zoom in and kind of see what you're doing. And then once you have one side lined up, you can kind of match them all to to that spacing because it'll be the same all the way around. A little bit of a tedious process, but um, pretty worth it in the end. Good idea is always to hold shift while you're doing it just so you don't move in weird ways. And then we can go ahead into this text layer. Um, I'm just gonna do a couple spaces and then I'm gonna click Command A and Command C and then I'm just gonna paste it all the way around. If you have some text that overlaps, you can go ahead and you can increase the size of the text or delete some. It just really depends on the kind of look you want and how many duplicates you want. But that looks pretty decent. And now we can go ahead and animate it. That we will do with the first margin or the last margin, just depends on what you kind of want to do. As you can see, as I'm sliding through this, it already animates. So if we just set a keyframe in the beginning, I'm going to go in and mark one spot. So I'm going to click Command R so I can use my rulers and guides. And we know we want to light a G up with head towards the end to make sure that it loops. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go scroll ahead right about there, go to the beginning of our composition and replay that. And you can see that it just kind of moves along. And uh, that's a pretty simple text animation. And as you can see, it loops perfectly, which is exactly what we want for our Instagram filters. So we can also use the effect that I did in the previous tutorial with the banners and just have those kind of play. So that's kind of the point of why I made that one tutorial is so that we can reuse it for Instagram filters, for example, or we can go ahead to one of the previous tutorials I made and use this text effect to create a, uh, a really simple title animation. Now we're gonna go ahead and export the one we just made and actually make an Instagram filter. See, we just have a transparent background, so that's perfect. So I'm gonna go into composition and I'm gonna add it to render queue and then I'm gonna click it. Um, and we're going to click the output module and I'm going to go up to format and do PNG sequence and then change to RGB plus alpha that makes sure that you are exporting with a transparent background. Click OK. And then we can just go in here and I have a folder already set up and I'm just going to put in a subfolder that's called border. 
and then I'm gonna click save and render that out. And once that's rendered out, we're gonna hop into Spark AR or Meta Spark, whatever it's called now. And that's where we'll be creating our Instagram filters. So make sure you download that. I have the links, all the links you might need in the description. So if you're ever wondering about something, check it out. So now that we're inside of Spark, you can do a bunch of this. You can create um, face filters, whatever you want really. This is just kind of a basic tutorial just to kind of show you around a little bit. So we're gonna start by creating a new project. Um, and I'm just gonna increase this a little bit so we can see better. And now the way in here, you can see what a blank canvas looks like. So I'm gonna start off by clicking the plus down here in the assets tab, and I'm gonna add an animation sequence, and I'm just gonna rename this to border. Up here, I'm gonna choose file, which is where we'll select our PNG sequence. And once you've located your files, you wanna go ahead and click one of them at the top, hold shift and click the very last one, and then click open. And since there is a size limit to it, you wanna make sure that you don't go too overboard. So now you can, it's imported it, and we're gonna make sure that we set this to 24, and you just wanna match that to whatever your, your sequence was in After Effects. So now that we have that, I'm gonna click the plus in the scene folders, and I'm gonna scroll down to um, 2D objects, and then click on the rectangle and insert. So now you can see we have this little square up here. You can also see it down here. What we're gonna do is for the width, you just click and fill and the same with the height. So now it fills our whole thing. And then you're gonna click materials. You're gonna click the plus button. And then you wanna go to your material down here because it creates a new one for you. And then for the texture, you wanna go ahead and click that little down arrow and click border, which is the sequence that we created. Now you can already see that it's playing on the, uh, the filter itself, but you can see it's, the colors are a bit off. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do and just click specular and that's gonna correct the colors that we have. Now that's pretty much how you create the Instagram filter itself. And then from here, you can just go ahead and publish it. But we're gonna add one more step. You can also go ahead and add a LUT or color filter to your Instagram filter if you want. I already have one made, but you can go ahead and make your own by, by going into either Lightroom or Photoshop and adding some color corrections to an eight by eight neutral LUT. I'll leave a link in the description to how you can do that. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and import the one I've already made. So I'm gonna go into file, import and color LUT. And then I'm gonna go ahead and localize what that is. I have two different ones. I'm just gonna use this one for now and click open. And then you can see down here, we can just rename this color LUT. And then you wanna right click on it, actions and apply to camera. And now you can see that the filter has been applied to her face and that is pretty much all that we're going to be doing for now. So we have our border and we have our color filter and other than that there's really not much more you want to do to it. Um, from here you just want to go ahead and click publish. I also want to mention that you do need a Facebook or Instagram account to do this since you're publishing there but I don't think you'd be watching a tutorial on how to create this if if you didn't have Instagram. Um, but we're gonna select, select publish to new effect. You can also, if you're working on an effect already and you've already uploaded it, but then want to change it, you can update an existing one. But we're gonna publish a new effect and then we're gonna click add experience and add this. And we're just gonna click a sharing effect and insert that. And I'm just gonna click that one, just why not, you know? Click done. And then you can see that the textures are being compressed. So you just have to wait until that green one is checked. And once that is checked, you'll be able to hit upload. So once you've hit publish on your filter, you'll be prompted with this site, which is where you can name your filter. You can add tags for it. And you will also, before you publish it for real, you also have to upload a file, like a demo, kind of showing how it works and um, all this boring stuff. But once you've clicked save, and once you've typed in most of the stuff and you've hit save, you can click test on device and then you'll be able to pick where to send it to. I usually just send it to Instagram. And as soon as you hit that, you'll be prompted with a notification on your phone. And if you open that up, it'll automatically show you the filter so you can try it out. You won't be able to post anything with the filter until you've actually published it, but it's a good way to test whether the filter works or not. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new and hopefully you also go ahead and start creating your own Instagram filters and spice up your social media game or use it to your advantage and make some more money. I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless, but uh, yeah, that's all for me this time. Thank you and um, I'll see you next week.